Money alone is just a tool and it's controlled and defined by our behaviors. Yeah. And so many times we feel like, you know, money controls us, but we control it. So the real definition of wealth to me is about building both your wealth and your worth at the same time. It's mm -hmm. about building that internal personal security, like your self-esteem, what you think and feel about yourself and building that at the same time you build your financial wealth. I know a lot of your experience is gets into wealth creation, wealth generation, uh, wealth planning, all of the good stuff. My question is, um, as someone who didn't grow up wealthy, um, if you just had a long journey in kind of creating wealth over time, I'm curious to know what kind of roadblocks you see that people have on a continual basis that really prevent them from even focusing on wealth creation. Oh, yeah, that's such a good question. You know, I believe first and foremost, you know, our, our brains are formed what we think about ourselves and what we think about our wealth by the time we're age six. Like, mm. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. So what we witness our parents doing the nonverbal conversations, the verbal conversations really get stuck in our subconscious mind. And I think we carry that with us mm -hmm. as we age and as we become adults. In fact, yeah. I thought the same thing. Like for me, I was so focused on making money. I just wanted to be a multimillionaire and so that's all I focused on because of my my scarcity mindset as a mm -hmm. child. And so I that's what I did. I kept building my wealth and building my wealth and building my wealth. And that was my main focus because I had to retrain my thought yeah. pattern on what was possible for me. Yeah, no, I think it's so good. And, it, you know, I was also thinking, too, it's like, you know, it took me a while before I could even articulate what wealth really meant to me. Right. Yeah, sure. It can be a number, but what's associated with that number? So talk to me a little about how what wealth really is, especially for our folks who may be on the journey of creation uh, in creating wealth for themselves? Well, absolutely love this question. I have a book that launches in just a month and the book is called Live Wealthy because mm -hmm. as a wealth advisor for 23 years, I, you know, I've sat in over gosh, 10,000 different client meetings. Mm. And I have been able to really define what wealth is. And I'm telling you this is that money alone is just a tool. Mm -hmm. And it's controlled and defined by our behaviors. Yeah. And so many times we feel like, you know, money controls us, but we control it. So the real definition of wealth to me is about building both your wealth and your worth at the same time. It's mm -hmm. about building that internal personal security, like your self-esteem, yeah. what you think and feel about yourself and building that at the same time you build your financial wealth, because yeah. the financial wealth is important. We need to understand all the tactics about building wealth. That is like wealth is oxygen for us yeah. and we need that. But we also have to like, take a step back and go, why are we building this wealth? Like how much is enough and how yeah. do we arrive at that enoughness? And that is the key, the secret key to building wealth. It's about aligning that total well-being of us. Mm -hmm. to our wealth building journey. It's not just, we don't just start with let's grow our income and let's invest our money and let's minimize our taxes. Super important. But it's taking that step back and going, why are we doing this? How do we align wealth? Because that's where we arrive at living wealthy. And, yeah. and, and to me, that definition is being wealthy versus just being rich and having money in the bank. Yeah. I think one of my first mentors told me a long time ago that, you know, a wealthy person would continually invest but not just invest money, invest time, talent, resources, mm -hmm. relationships, like they're continually in investing in uh, making their life and the lives of those that they love better on a continual basis. And he said, a poor man will always spend, you know, there will always be more withdrawals than more deposits, I guess you would say. And one of the things that, uh, that you had mentioned to one of our good friends, uh, Evan Carmichael, on a show you guys did recently was, and I thought it was pivotal because I was like, oh, I remember being there too. Um, this ability or desire to spend enough to be enough. Like, let's talk about that limiting belief for just a minute, because I feel like a lot of people who are chasing wealth are chasing that rather than actually chasing true, you know, living wealthy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was I, I remember, you know, as a story, I did the same thing. I was chasing wealth. In fact, I was at a point in my career, you know, I'm about 23, 24 years in and where I was making five times the amount of money that I was thought I would make, you know? Yeah. Um, and I was still feared those credit card statements coming in. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I literally had to take a pause and go, what the F is wrong with me? Yeah. Like it was the fear of not the, the money was coming in, but it was the fear of me being enough. It was me being so still insecure in my own skin and mm -hmm. comparing my differences to everybody else's so-called strengths. And I didn't know my why. 
And, mm. and once I tried it, when I, once I started doing the personal development, which we know personal development is just about what you think and what yeah. you feel, right? Yeah. It's about what you think and what you feel and really honing in on that journey. Yeah. And I was like, Ooh, it's so interesting that my wealth actually started growing faster when mm -hmm. I worked on myself. Yeah. So it so, like, it was so weird. And you think it like these opposite forces building your personal wealth and your external wealth, but they're interconnected forces. And it's just, it was such a like eye opening to me. And I was like, I need to step back from, you know, for me, I needed to step back in that from that one on one client interaction that I've had for 23 years. I'm like, I need to tell the world this because yeah. if I can achieve it, like I came from nothing too. Like mm -hmm. I came from a town of 2000 people, very limited thinking. Like I felt trapped all the time, knowing nothing in the financial world. Like as I, as I was like, oh gosh, what do I want to do with my life? I just want to make money. Like, how do you do that? You learn about money. Yeah. Right. And yeah. so I've gone from nothing. I've gone from being broke. No one's given me anything. I'm the sole income provider of my household to this multi million dollar successful financial advisory business. And mm -hmm. I don't say that. Because woe is me. I say that because I was, I, I had nothing but limiting beliefs yeah. and I was able to grow by just doing the work. Yeah. No, it's so good. In fact, yeah. I was just, it just dawned on me. I my greatest mistake in ever building businesses. Um, and my, you know, my first one I started about 25 plus years ago, um, was not building myself along the way. Mm -hmm. I got to where I'd earned probably a top line of, of that particular year. This is probably 10 years in maybe 10 or $12 million top line. Right. Mm -hmm. Net income was strong. Um, I was looking at, it, I was like, okay, well, yeah. And then, but I was running on my office, like, you know, being a doofus. Cause I had people with CFO and C like COO and all these different acronyms behind their names with MBAs and CPAs and ABCs and EFGs and, you know, kind of thing. And here I was the high school dropout. Right. I'm like, you know, so that insecurity, uh, caused me to be a lot more aggressive than needed to be. Mm -hmm. Um, early on mm -hmm. until I realized that this personal and professional development thing is basically its own school. Yeah, you know? apps, it is. It's its own school and it's better education than what you get in high school all day long. Um, you know, my kid, my daughter, I have two teenage daughters and my one is like a straight C student if we're lucky and yeah. she hates school and she's very smart. And it's because she can see beyond, you know, what they're studying there. And I think fantastic for people that are smart enough yeah. to drop out and go, I need something different. Right. And I think, you know, I, I, I you made a, a great point right there is that Gosh, I feel like sometimes when we do that, we feel less than society because mm -hmm. we're different yeah. and maybe we don't excel in school. Like I hated school myself and I feel like, you know, gosh, we use those insecurities and our differences and, and it makes us more insecure. And I'm telling you, it wasn't until I was able to go, wow. That's actually like, we know it's our superpowers, right? We're mm -hmm. different. Like yeah. if you ask me to spell something like, uh, thank God for autocorrect. <laughs> like, can I do numbers? Absolutely. But I was so yeah. ingrained at like how, how I'm so different than yeah. everybody else. And that made me so insecure. And it was finally that light bulb through personal development that I was like, damn it. You know what? This is, this is actually, that's going to, you know, throttle me into the future and make me yeah. so different and make me, you know, super financially successful. But then I turn that financial success into like, how do I make other people financially successful? Yeah. By, Cause we all have those insecurities. Right. Yeah. That's why my book is called Live Wealthy. It's about, you know, building your self-esteem and building your financial assets at the same time. Because when you do that, yeah, that's when life becomes meaningful. Yeah, no, totally. In fact, one of the things I love most, so much about your work and the stuff that you've been doing is you actually affect affect uh, behavior change. Mm -hmm. Right. It's one thing to learn something or to read something. It's another thing to apply something, to measure something and to, you know, continue on a journey of consistency. Talk to me a little bit about kind of why it's so important to kind of look at wealth creation and all this in, a, in more of a holistic approach where it's, you know, cause it's, it's easy to read a spreadsheet, right? My, my first mentor was joking around with me a long time. This is, he passed away, you know, in 2003, but mm -hmm. one of the things I used to struggle with algebra, like big time. Mm -hmm. He said, try, he said, next time you're struggling with an algebraic equa uh, equation, he said, put a dollar sign in front of it. And sure enough, I put dollar signs, all of a sudden I could solve the problem, right? So we got, we got activity, we got application, we got behavior modification. Uh, talk to me about live wealthy and, and the, and the, and, and how that actually affects behavior modification. Cause I think you're one of a kind in that aspect. Yeah. I, I appreciate that question too. I, you know, to me, it comes naturally just to take action, mm -hmm. but I, you know, I realized in life that our pain 
Like for you, it was all yeah. about the scarce, right? I want money. I like, I need money, money. So our pain becomes our passion mm -hmm. and you got to get really deep into the pain of your life. Cause we all have it. Mm -hmm. And when we get really deep into that pain, then we can realize like, oh, that's what really, you know, it, it, it makes us take that action yeah. and change that behavior in our lives. So either you have the pain to do it on your own, Mm -hmm. Or for some of us, we just don't have enough, like really deep rooted pain in our life. And that's where, you know, for me, not just writing the book, the book is just, you know, the book is just an entry level into people understanding what my philosophy is about wealth, mm -hmm. but it's really about creating this online digital advisory platform where I'm not having people build their wealth on their own. Yeah, because no one does the stuff on their own. No one takes the courses yeah. or they take the first, you know, hour and then they're like, eh, you know, or we're they in binge this. watch them all and never do anything and never do anything. Right. Because yeah. they're learning, but they're not at, applying, like you said. And so yeah. it's really about this connection. In fact, at the end of this month, I'm doing this own your worth experience event in Las Vegas. Oh, very and cool. It's, it, and it's about us women coming together because we know we don't implement on our own. We mm -hmm. know because of fear and because of life and just how busy that, you know, we're in this treadmill of life. Like we're just constantly going yeah. and scrolling and, and it's, it's, it's for us to take a couple of days together and take a step back and learn together. But then we are executing together. It's about taking that action together because when I need help, I need someone to like kick me in the ass to go, you know what, get off the couch and let's go because yeah. I get stuck in my own head. Sometimes we all do, and we all need that. So to me, it's about the collective collaboration and it's really about the community and that's what's mm -hmm. so important is we need each other to move forward yeah yeah no that's really really good i was thinking too you know when it comes down to behavior change and and, and having an ally and people there to surround you to do that is a, is a huge huge piece in moving the needle let's be honest yeah um i was also watching uh recently a good friend of mine graham stephens uh he was had a piece of content out there. There was some, you know, the average uh, multimillionaire is, you know, you, you think the one, the difference between a one percenter and then somebody's making forty thousand dollars a year, and the and the choices that they're making along the way that end up driving that behavior change. You said that the average person's net worth, I think you said seventy five or eighty percent of the population, the average net worth is about twelve thousand dollars, eighteen thousand dollars, right? Because of debt. Because of debt. And then he starts digging into it and he goes, well, and, and there, here's the crazy part is most people couldn't tell you what net worth is, let alone net income. Mm -hmm. So let's break down net worth and net income a little bit. Cause I, I know for me that when I understood that net worth was very different than how much money that I thought I had in my, in my possession, mm -hmm. um, it changed the way in which I look at wealth in general. Yeah. Interesting. So, you know, net worth is really about your assets, everything that you have as an asset, your home, Mm -hmm. um, your investment portfolios, maybe your cars, they are a depreciating asset, but it's everything that you own. And then you take away everything that you owe, mm -hmm. right? Your debt. So if I have a house that's worth a million dollars, but I have a $800,000 mortgage on there, that net worth difference is only 200,000. Yep, because exactly. if I, because if I passed away today, I have to take everything that I own minus everything that I owe. And that's what my family has left. Mm -hmm. And it's important to look at that net worth statement because we want to see that the trajectory of that grow every single year. But we as society, because you said the average net worth is 12 grand. Right? Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's crazy low, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. And it's because, um, because we don't manage our entire wealth in a productive way. In mm -hmm. fact, we're just looking at, I think so many times we feel like, that we're just chasing more income. Yeah. We're just ch like nobody, like a, you ask anyone that's listening today, if you said how much is enough, they'd like, like more, right? At any wealth level. I mean, there's been interviews by people that have nothing to people that are multi-billionaires and it's like, how much is enough? And they all say a little bit more because we're on this constant, like this constant ch treadmill or this constant tr like road of constantly wanting more. Yeah. And I believe that we don't take enough time to step back and say, okay, how much is enough income? And 
all of us, because of that net worth number you gave me, we like stop and go, all we do is want more because we don't do anything when the money comes in. Yeah. We don't turn it into our net worth, right? Yeah. We're either spending and having that money dissipate in our life, yeah. or we're actually having that money grow and work just as hard for us as we do for it. And that is the miss missing link in building wealth. It's yeah. like, you can have the income coming in, but I tell my audience, it's like, gosh, you know, so we all have income coming in. I don't care if it's $50,000 a year or $50 million a year. Then what we do is we have to pay taxes on that money. Mm -hmm. And so we either are going to pay more taxes or we can pay less taxes and turn some of that income into our future. Yeah. Because when we turn mm -hmm. some of that money into our future and start investing that in the right type of accounts, we pay less in taxes. Mm -hmm. And then that money starts working for us, because I'm telling you, life is expensive. We all know that, especially in this inflationary time, like it's expensive to live, right? And we need our money to be producing for us just as much as we produce for it, because there's not enough time and energy on this planet mm -hmm. to just have, just to look at making income. Yeah, no, absolutely. In fact, I think most people, one of the things that um, <clears throat> most people don't do is they put compound interest or compounding they don't put it to work for them, right? They, they'll right. they go get a bunch of credit cards, for right. example, go heavily in debt, you know, with credit cards because they you're they're the behavior. I would argue that the behavior that they're actually doing is impulsivity. Been there, done that, like mm -hmm. no, like not not throwing shade or casting uh, casting anything out. And then you end up letting the the people with the bigger buildings end up making all the interest on the money that you're now paying them versus <clears throat> taking that same extra resource by smart tax planning or smart investing and stuff like that, getting that extra capital to then deploy in a compounding way for yourself. What are some of the tools and the tricks that you see, you've used, maybe some of the things in Live, uh, Live Wealthy that maybe you can share with the audience that maybe they could do today if they're only making sixty, eighty thousand dollars $80,000 a year? Yeah, well, at any income level, like I just said, the first thing you need to do is pay yourself first. And that is, you know, we all have this money coming in. And mm -hmm. we have to pay taxes on it, which is a non-negotiable. And we have to save a portion of our gross income, which also should be non-negotiable. I'm telling you, in my 23 years of advising clients one-on-one, -on -one, and I've told cl like clients, you have to put a percentage of your income away. I mm -hmm. always like to say 15%, but some people can't afford to do that. I understand that, right? I'm a yeah. realist too. But even if it's 5% of your, of your gross income away, I'm telling you, I have never had anyone come back to me and say they've missed the money. It's super simple. All you do is meet with someone like myself, a fiduciary advisor and say, just take 5% of my money, take 5% of my money and start putting it away. And by mm -hmm. the way, you do have to meet with a fiduciary advisor because a fiduciary is someone who has your best interests at heart. So yeah. you don't just like, you know, they have to by law, like we could go to jail if we do something inappropriately for mm -hmm. clients because money's so sensitive. But if you work with someone that that literally has the oath of you have to trust me because I'm under that umbrella of trust, that umbrella of fiduciary, then that person can put the money away in your best interest in a diversified investment portfolio of stocks and bonds. Mm -hmm. And then that money starts compounding for you. And I'm telling you, you never miss it. Why? Because you would pay the majority of that money to the IRS anyways. Yeah. So like, it, it's a no brainer because in my book, live wealthy, I teach people that, you know what? So many times, like our audiences are afraid to start saving money because they're like, Oh, I don't want to give up t today. And I don't have enough money coming in. And I still want to go for happy hour. And I want to be with my friends and I want to travel and blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. And, and what happens is that you can still do that. <laughs> like you don't have to give up your today to save for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Like if you play the tax game and the, it's like the, the, the IRS makes it so difficult for us to understand the tax game because they want us to pay more taxes. Yeah. But if you work with someone like me and you work with a CPA, my God, like you don't have to give up today to do it. It's yeah. so powerful. It's like, okay. I mean, I've literally taken client A and client B, <clears throat> same incomes. Okay. Same incomes. And one saves for the future and one doesn't. Both of them don't have to give up today because they're still doing the fun stuff today. Yeah. But the other one either has debt or has nothing 20 years from now. And that other, that other client would actually have a million plus in their investment portfolio. So yeah. they can actually like enjoy what we all want to do in life is have freedom, right? We all want to enjoy our, our time. 
here on this planet. It's short lived for all of us. And it's like, you know what? Like literally just take a step back and start yeah. like the non-negotiable is putting a percentage of your income away. And I'm telling you, you won't freaking miss it. Yeah. And you will love yourself yeah. and your life 20 years from now. Yeah. And the best thing you can do is get it and forget it. I mean, honestly, and, and do exactly Automation. what you're talking about. Automation. Just, it just forget so about it. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's going to compound while you're not looking. You, if, if it's done well, it's going to, it's going to, the average of whether it, you know, that's that particular investment does will go up and down based on all kinds of conditions, but staying in the long game, I see a lot of people, as soon as fear starts getting, I, some would call it fear porn starts going out into the media, right? Yeah. 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 Oh, every, oh God, I got to get, give me all my stuff back. Give me it all back. I got, I got, I got to squirrel it away. I got to put it under my pillow and you know, all this kind of stuff. And I'm like, no, 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 no. That's the absolute worst thing you can do. Yeah. I was talking to a good friend of mine um, who also likes and enjoys the, the real estate space like I do. And um, you know, he and I were uh, chatting it up and you know, it's, it's funny that so many people get so emotionally tied to an economic environment that fear takes over and they sell at the exact moment they should hold. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then happens. they buy at the exact moments they should hold. Yes. Right. And, and that's yes. kind of the, the, the complex thing I've seen. And that's why someone like myself and my team as advisors come mm -hmm. in because building wealth, it, the, it's about the decision making. It, yeah. You know how, where to invest. Whether you invest in real estate, you invest in the market. You know it really doesn't matter. Yeah. It, like chasing returns doesn't matter. What matters is the consistency, and you don't do what you just said. Because mm -hmm. so, like I'm telling you, like over. Let's see. What are we in 2023 now? <laughs> I'm in my 50s. I'm like, what year is it? <laughs> like, okay, so last year was hell in the stock market, mm -hmm. and the year before that, I was advising clients like. Like clients, do you know you're getting 20% rate of return on your investments? And that's not normal. Like mm -hmm. the market is overpriced. And so what we did is total opposite of what you say people do, right? So yeah. you, what you do is you sell at the high. Like when things are going really well, yeah. you sell that shit off. And then you buy in like this past year, I've had the majority of my clients, I said, we're going to put 10% more of your portfolio into the markets right now because there's a fire sale. And yeah. I think that's the difference between like, you know, there's not a, like in it working with an advisor because it helps you yeah. get, stop getting in the way of yourself because yeah. fear drives our decision making. And I'm telling you as a behavioral advisor, like I, I'm the first behavioral advisor in the country because I saw that all the time. I'm like, no, you guys, like you're making the wrong decisions with your wealth at the wrong time. And yeah. people get rewarded financially mm -hmm. for doing the thing that's uncomfortable mm -hmm. in an uncomfortable situation. Yeah, you get rewarded yeah. with your investments that way. You get rewarded with your income that way. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I was just thinking too, you know, uh, scarcity mindset, poverty mindset is 100% emotional. 100% yeah. emotional. Yeah. yeah. Um, wealth mindset is 100% strategical. Mm -hmm. Like even though I may feel this, the strategy says we're going to execute this way. Mm -hmm. And then when you operate by a strategy, nine times out of 10, you're in a much better place than you thought you would be in had you acted in the emotional. Absolutely. And let me ask you this for you to get to that journey in your career. I'm guessing you had to hire a team around you absolutely. to help you make those good decisions, right? Yeah, absolutely. We, I mean, yeah, you, you have to have people like yourself that, that one does have your best interest at heart. Um, two has a different view on the marketplace in general. You have, even as, even in your role, you're going to have, you're going to have access to different tools and things that your general public's not going to. Mm -hmm. Right. Different investment tools, the way different options, all kinds of, you know, probably custom APIs and all kinds of really cool stuff to kind of do that. Why not put that stuff to work? Right. right. And, yeah. and what I see again, and this is comes this come back from my father back in the day, a long time ago. <clears throat> and he's a he's an amazing guy. Love him to death. But he told me when I was probably 16 or 17, he had just lost his business. He said, hey, Scoggins, don't get ahead. They get by. And nice. if I hadn't been for my first mentor. Um, old, we refer to him as old man Myrick now, um, which was his employer saying, he telling me that, no, the way you think determines the way you behave, the way you behave will determine how wealthy or not wealthy or whatever you're going to, you're going to be. Mm -hmm. He also told me something else that I thought was really pivotal. He said, when everybody else is riding the bull, always know that someone's chasing the bear. Mm -hmm. so, so you look at a bull market, like you were just talking about 20% yeah. returns, everybody's yeah. Whoa, yeah. this is life. Life is going to be great forever. Let's go. Yeah. yeah. It's never great forever. No. And it's mm -hmm. never rotten forever. 
Right. So you have to have someone like yourself to, to put those things into place to make sure that you do have that balanced approach. In fact, I don't really know off the top of my head right now what um, the actual timing is, but, you know, recessions like we're in right now and and bear markets mm-hmm. are so short lived. Like they I mean, the depression was seven years like we're talking 1920s. Right. Yep. But since then, where we've had some bad markets in 20, you know, 2000 in 2008 and now mm-hmm. just a couple of years ago or the, the markets that we're in now, they're short lived. Yeah. Like like maybe like back in 2008, it was 18 months, Mm -hmm. like literally 18 months. And so it's a short window of time. And we like the media loves that short window of time because it gives them something to talk about. Right. But it's like those short windows of opportunity just right now too. right now, the opportunity is now for you to become a millionaire. In fact, your time in the short window, in fact, we're already 12 months into it. You guys, I've been sitting in client meetings for 12 months going, I'm sorry, your portfolio is down 8%. I'm sorry, your portfolio is down 14%. But guess what? Guess what? Let's add a little bit more into that. Because whether it recovers in six months from now or 12 months from now, I don't know exactly the timing of it. Mm -hmm. But I do know the markets will recover. And I'm telling you, the timing is now to put your money to work for you because it's a, you know, it's a opportunity because everything's on sale. So not only is everything on sale, but you get the compounding interest on top of that. Like, like that's how millionaires Mm -hmm. are made. And I'm telling your audience, like right now, don't wait, don't wait. Like, I know you think, I know you think you can't afford it, but I'm telling you, you can't afford not to take advantage of this opportunity right now. It's huge. Yeah, for sure. Well, and the reality is, is uh, just in being quite honest, um, it was probably nine months ago, I did an Instagram live and I said, Hey guys, this is going to happen. Here's all the indicators. Here's all the tea leaves. This is, this thing's going to happen. Here's what you need to do. And one of those things was not to get involved in fear porn, to be smart, get an advisor, be strategic get ready. It's going to be okay. Um, and then, you know, basically just do your due diligence and continue to work the program. Mm -hmm. And as we're, as we're kind of coming in and this, you know, I would say the market currently is a little is volatile, right? It it has like one moment, Hey, where things are starting to get better. And then other moments like, Oh, things are starting to fall apart. And the reality is, is you just have to look at it from objective because, uh, another thing that that same mentor told me, he goes, when markets are bad, that's when you invest. Like mm-hmm. in real estate, in in the market, like what, like that's when stuff's on sale. And anybody with capital, anybody that's wealthy that has cash on hand, that's what they're doing. They're waiting for down markets to buy in at a sale and then ride that margin up till they get to resell at the upper end, like we just talked about a mm-hmm. second ago. Mm-hmm. You know, you start taking all those parts and pieces to put it together. A lot of folks just don't know where to start. Like, right. okay, well, all that sounds great. You guys have become successful. You guys have overcome limiting beliefs or, you know, working through those and stuff like that. That, that makes total sense. I'm, where do I start? Like, I, like, yeah. I, I don't know how to hop into the market. Like what does even hop into the market even mean? You know, kind of thing. Right. Yeah. Well, let me just take a step back first and say, you know, the opportunity right now, if you look at the price to earning ratios, um, mm-hmm. stocks are still a little overpriced. So yeah. I think we could still, like you said earlier in the, in the question, like the, the, I think we're still in this volatile road for a little bit. Um, but there's opportunity and in fixed income. In fact, fixed income, which are bonds, right? Bonds yep. are just like loans. Like, you know, you give, you give, uh, someone, a company money and they're in return going to pay you interest on there. And there's so much opportunity in the fixed income market right now. Um, so there's opportunity, but we're in the fixed income. Okay. So there's opportunity in fixed income. I still think there's opportunity in the stock market, but if we're looking at stocks and bonds, um, uh, you know, and obviously real estate, which you dabble into, or Mm -hmm. probably the right word isn't dabble, but you have probably a significant portfolio in real estate. Um, <clears throat> but there is opportunity now, but where do people start? You're right. Cause like they go like, where do I go? Do I go in bonds? Do I go in real estate? Do I, like mm-hmm. what the heck? And so I always say, you know, it's about, you start with finding the right human being, the right advisor mm-hmm. that's going to create a financial plan for you. Yep. Because I'm telling you, it's not just where do I start investing and how much should I put away? It's like, you got to have a plan. I call it a wealth alignment plan. That's where you start. You start with meeting with somebody that's going to help you have a plan for yourself and your family. Like, where are you going? You don't just start investing, right? Yeah. You got to have, okay, what is the goal? When do you want to be financially independent? Okay. Like, 
how much cash reserves should you have in, for emergencies? Okay. Mm -hmm. How much protection planning do you need? Like nobody hates insurance, but we all need life insurance. The majority of us need life insurance. Mm -hmm. Like how do we protect our wealth? Should something happen to us? Yeah. So like, when do I want to be like done working? Like, when do I want that? When, how do I minimize my taxes? Like all those things are a big puzzle and they all fit together. So where do you start? You start with a financial plan because mm -hmm. your financial plan is going to tell you how much you really need to put away. Yeah. So it's the how much first mm -hmm. and then the where second. Okay. Yeah. Because people don't have this plan and yeah. then they don't know where the F they're going. Yeah. And then if they don't know where they're going, then they're not making good decisions. It mm -hmm. starts with a plan. So yeah. easy. And I, you know, and, and I'm not here to plug myself, um, but I'm, you can see I'm super passionate about this. So I have like, I've over the last four years, I've created this digital online advisory platform to allow people that don't have the millions yet to create the millions. And it's this financial plan that they can build that actually shows them how to have like really four different buckets of money. Mm -hmm. And they can plug and play their own information in there. They don't have to share how much debt they have. They don't have to share what their incomes are. You know, they can plug and play into this financial plan and go, oh, this is exactly how much I need if I want to achieve X by this date. Yeah. And yeah. I think it's so important because, you know, I just sat there, you know, for 23 years sitting there helping millionaires become more like helping them gain more millions. That's yeah. what I've been doing for two decades. Yeah. And I was like, damn it. You know what? Like, the people that really need the help are the people that want to be the millionaires. Like, mm -hmm. you know, uh, my two daughters, right? They don't yeah. know how to build wealth, right? Oh, the 20 year olds that have $40,000 income, they want the millions, right? They're entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. They want to build. So I was like, gosh, how can I create a platform to serve this community and, and give the same fiduciary advice that I give to my millionaires, but give it in mm -hmm. a way that, that is efficient for them and still private for them and allows them to build their own financial plan. Because I'm telling you, the secret is the plan. That's where you yeah. start. Yeah, absolutely. No, that's such good feedback. You know, it, it's clear you are passionate. Mm -hmm. Like you're very passionate about this yeah. subject. You're very passionate about helping people in this area. What, what, why was now the best time to come out with a book and kind of put your thoughts and your heart on paper? <laughs> well, now isn't the best time. Cause I'm telling you, I wrote that freaking book in COVID, right? 2020 yeah. in 2020. Um, and so it's just taken this long to launch it, but mm -hmm. if I'm going to be authentic and real, why is the best time? Um, because the timing was right for me mm -hmm. because I used to be so insecure about like scaling my business. I mean, it's multi-million dollar business the way it is. It was doing great. Like I don't need to do this, right? I don't mm -hmm. need to like put my neck on the line to do this, but I thought, you know, I finally got to this place where I feel so freaking good in my own skin. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I don't feel this insecurity and this fear so much. I mean, we all have fear still, but, but this anxiety yeah. around what I do and how I do it for people. And I was like, you know what? I don't want to like experience life solo anymore. Like I live in this beautiful house. I have a beauty, like I, 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 love my environment. But I was like, I love people more than I love money. And I'm like, how can I bring more people on this journey with me to mm -hmm. be able to get to this point where they can have the wealth support exactly how they choose to live. And I just feel like I'm called, it's a spiritual calling to be able to share this with other people. And I believe now, like, you know, we're in a wealth crisis now. I believe it's because it's a worth crisis. Like, it's like, stand up, like yeah. be freaking uncomfortable in your weaknesses. We all have them. Yeah. I have them. Like, I still struggle with anxiety. I still like get fearful when I get on a freaking airplane. Like I'm a human being. Okay. But it's like when we walk through that fear and we get to that other side and we're like, oh my gosh, like this is beautiful together. And I just feel like, like when we work on our worth, mm -hmm. Our wealth grows and it's like yeah. oh my gosh like if i can help people work on both of those at the same time and yeah. i can help people get to the, the point in life that i'm at like i will die a happy girl oh man so good we well, you know it's i also know that your live event coming up significant investment yeah 
right? Uh, yes. um, I'm, I'm a live events person. That's what I do, right? Okay. I, that's one of my favorite uh, niches that we're in is, is doing live events and hosting them and, and, and all that kind of stuff. So I know the investment, the time, the resource, uh, you know, bringing in the speakers, putting the things together, making sure there's an experience and all this kind of mm -hmm. stuff. What's at your heart uh, of this live event? Like what, what is it you're hoping to inspire or change in the hearts of the people that come to it? Yeah, I love that question too. You are so good. Oh my gosh, I think this is like my favorite podcast. You, <laughs> thank you, are amazing. We and by the way, we didn't even talk prior to this, right? We didn't have any questions rehearsed like this. Well, I did my research. Thank you very you much. Do I, your I, I don't research. Know how amazing you are, and that's why you're on. Well, that's why you had to get in front of the audience. Well, I'm telling you, you're amazing. That's what I'm really that. telling. But I thank think, you. um, I think you kind of hit the nail on the head earlier. It's 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 about the collaboration. And when we own our work together, we don't have to do life on, on our own. And yeah. when, when entrepreneurs come in and they're like, I have so many decisions to make. I don't know if I should hire this person or not. Yep. Should I, should I invest in my business or not? Should I engage in this new partnership? Like there's so many questions and we need support. And that's kind of the catalyst of this event because it's like, it is for entrepreneurs. It's like, oh my gosh, when you're stuck, you have a resource now to go to. Someone says not just going to sell you a course yeah. or sell you into their platform. It's yep. like, no, yep. we got, we we're, we're there together to support one another and be like, you know what? Yep. I got your back because mm -hmm. when you build true wealth, it doesn't become so much about you. Yeah. It becomes about giving to others. And, and you know, as well as I know, is when you give, like authentically give and want to mm -hmm. help and serve, it does come back to you because we all want to grow. Like we all love money too. I'm at the stage now. I still love money. I want to grow my wealth. Like, like we never stop growing because we're human beings. We evolve every day, yeah. but, but it's really about how do we continue to support the 14 year old that wants to become mm -hmm. an entrepreneur and drop yeah. out of high school and like, woohoo, right? Yeah. Or how do we support the six year old or mm -hmm. the seven year old that's reinventing themselves still? Yeah. Like, I feel like I'm just reinventing myself at 52. Like I've yeah. been doing this for 20, but I, this whole media business and, and going in and, and doing speaking about it, it's a whole nother world. Yeah. Right. And it's merging those two businesses together. So we never stop growing and you don't have to do it alone. Yep. And that's what this event is about. I love it. You know, it's funny. I was, I, was, I had a very fortunate, uh, it's not, you know, how you, they, they tell you never meet your heroes, right? They, you know, they, they tell you that, you know, it's always never a good idea. <clears throat> and it wasn't that long ago, <laughs> about a year and a half ago, I was able to um, have a guest of mine that, a um, guy that named Les Brown. So he's obviously one of the most well-known speakers on the planet. And uh, I was able to share with him that fresh out of coming out of homelessness, I got invited to a conference of a, from a friend of mine, which he was giving the it's possible speech. And I always say that live events are the where you can change in an instant. Mm -hmm. Like you can, you can take you a year, five years, 10 years, or you can change in an instant. Like mm -hmm. something can grab a hold of your heart. Something can grab a hold of your mind. You get a new perspective. You, you, you make a new connection. Um, and I'm a huge believer that live events are the way in which you accelerate your potential. I right? agree with you. Yeah. Right. Cause and you like got you courses, said, yeah. you can do courses, you do them on your own, which is they're, they're great and you need them and they're supportive. But as far as getting fast forward acceleration, you have to put yourself around the fire in order for you to catch fire. Right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And you can change, like you said, in an instant, mm -hmm. but you need the support. Cause I'm telling you, life will constantly throw you. Life will constantly sting you. Yeah. Right. It's the challenges, the, the, the conflicts, the disappointments, the disagreements, they're all going to be there all day long, yeah. every day, every month of the year. So it's about when those come to you mm -hmm. because they are after you change at the event, but when, yeah. when life comes to you and stings you, it's all in how you respond to that is what makes you successful or not. And going back to that event, going back to that, that experience, that transformation experience you had live, yeah. with a community of kick-ass human beings, yeah. right? And you can always go back. So how, you know, what was the feeling at this event? And then how can I change or how can I respond differently when mm -hmm. these challenges come to me next month? And how am I going to operate in a different capacity? Because yeah. I'm telling you, you either going left or you're going right, right? Yeah. Every day, every day, sure. there's 35,000 decisions. Are you going left or you're going right? And when we make those really good decisions because of that event we attended and because of the support, in the community after the event, that's when people lives do become yeah. a transformation.
Yeah. Well, look, I know we could send people a hundred different directions, but uh, to kind of find out more about you and what you're working on, uh, I want to get them to the live event. I'm sure they can pick up the book at the live event as well. But uh, talk to me about where where the best way for you to connect with everybody. Uh, you know, where would you like to meet everybody for the first time? Yeah, I'm launching that book at the live event. It's March 31st, April 1st in Las Vegas. There's virtual tickets as well. There's in-person tickets. Um, you can go to, um, the website is Own Your Worth Experience. So ownyourworthexperience.com. Or you can head on over to just my website because it's Don Dalby anywhere. My website, Don Dalby, Instagram, fate, like it made, we made it easy. But if you really want to go to the event, um, which I would highly suggest you do because again, entrepreneurs, it's a tax write-off, right? <laughs> yeah. It's a tax write-off, so it really doesn't cost you that much money. And the the value in exchange, you're, it's going to change your life. So that's yeah. ownyourworthexperience.com. I love it. Dawn, yeah. thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I'm telling you what, everybody's going to have to go pick up the book or spend some time with your live event. Uh, I look forward to meeting you in person myself in the near future. I can't wait for that. Thank you for your time. All right, take it easy. See ya. You too. Bye-bye. I hope you liked that video. And if you did, make sure you check out this next video right here. You know, I kind of look at it like a game. I love playing games as a kid. I still yeah. love playing games. I think the most fascinating game is the tax game. We're all in the game. I just mm -hmm. go, how do I win that game? It's really just understanding the rules of the game. Most people understand very few of the rules. And so they pay a high cost. They lose the mm -hmm. game. Whereas, you know, you really understand the rules. It's, it's a pretty easy game to win.